Good morning, creatives. Um, it's a rainy Sunday morning here in McMinnville, Oregon. As I continue to put and pick and sort for my great adventure, but I am itching to do some painting today. So I thought I'd show you a little tutorial I've been wanting to do. But before I do that, I also wanted to give you a peek at my beautiful front yard with everything blooming out there today. Yum! So I'll see you at the easel. I'm in my makeshift studio today, um, my kitchen nook, and um, one of the videos I've been wanting to share with you is a little bit about a limited color palette. I'll be working in watercolor, but this would sure work in acrylic as well. So hang on, here we go. All right, <clears throat> here's my setup this morning. Um, I have a very limited palette. A warm and cool of each yellow, blue, and red. I'll talk more about those as we go. Um, for my yellow today, I have a Gram M Gram Gamboge. I have M Gram Azo Yellow. So when we talk about warm, the warm color of yellow is going to have a little bit more red mixed in, and the yellow is going to have a little bit of blue mixed in, so it's going to be a little more lemony. A primary would be right between these. So again, this is the warm one, a little sunnier. This is the cool one, a little lemonier, and primary would be right in between. If you're working in acrylic, the names might be a little bit different of your paints, but if you get a lemony yellow and an orangey yellow, you're going to be good. <clears throat> so my for my reds, oh, it looks like I've got all um, Graham on this. For my red, I've got quinacridone rose um, and the cadmium light. So the quinacridone would be a little cooler. It's got a little more blue in it. The cadmium is a little bit yellower, almost orangey. And again, that's cadmium red light. The other two colors that I'm using are <clears throat> ultramarine blue. There's a Dan Smith there. And phthalo, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. I call it phthalo blue. So the phthalo blue, actually these two are backwards. This has a little purple in it. It should be on this side. And the phthalo has um, a little yellow in it. So it should be on this side. So these two are actually backwards on my palette. Darn. All right. So the next thing I've done... This one would be the warm one, your ultramarine. And I'm going to map this all out with you, so no worries. I'm going to set this aside. What I've done here, if you can see, is I've done two circles, one in the inside of the other, a little smaller, a little bigger. And I'm going to start by dividing these into roughly thirds. And this is how I'm going to split my color wheel. Now, with these six colors, a warm and cool of each, you can make any color that you need from these six colors. When I first started watercolor painting, this is what I started with, is this limited palette of warm and cool. So I'm going to go through one of the ways that I mix colors to get very bright, vibrant colors. Um, I have to laugh at myself in the old days, when I was younger in the old days, I used to laugh at these little old ladies that made these colorful quilts all the time. Um, and here I am, a little old lady, painting colorful paintings now. So, yeah, be careful what you ask for. So I've got some water here in a jug. I'm going to set that a little bit aside. Uh, a Princeton brush that's just about the right size. Now, I have previously activated my paint by adding a little water to each one. Um, 
So if you're just starting with a dry palette, whether it's pan paint or tubes, take a little spritzer and give them all a little spritz to activate them. So I'm going to start with my yellows today. And this is my Azo yellow, my bright yellow. And I'm going to start right away. Let's turn it this way. There we go. I'm going to start right away with putting it straight color on a little area of my color wheel. So again, this is Azo, a lemony yellow. Swish my brush. and I, Well, I, my colors are still clean because they have a tendency to get a little mixed. I'm going to take some of the Gamboge, my orangey yellow, and put it, oh look, a dog hair. Thanks, Barkley. Put it right here. Let's see if I can get that dog hair out. He just loves to join the fun too. There we go. <clears throat> so there's my two yellows. From here, I think I'm going to go into oranges. So I'm going to start again with my cadmium, which is my orangey yellow, cadmium red light. And I'm going to put it down here. Now this is just one way you could mix the colors. If you did it differently, it wouldn't be wrong. You just get a little bit different color wheel. Um, I encourage you to go and use as many different colors and as many different combinations as you can. Oftentimes I'll have three or four color wheels that I do with just these six colors in mixing colors in different ways. So I'm going to take my orangey yellow and put it on my palette and my orangey red and put it on my palette. Swishing my brush each time. So I'm going to move this aside and bring my plate up so you can actually see my mixing. So with these two colors, cadmium and gamboge, I am going to start mixing. So bring out some. And what I do is I really don't necessarily have a goal when I start mixing. I just kind of look at it and say, oh, that one looks almost in between. So I'll start here and make an in-between box. Now as I do that, it looks to me like it needs to be over here. So I'm going to move it over a little. It has a little bit more red in it. You notice I did add a little bit more red. So there's my first orange. I'm going to swish my brush. I need some more of that gamboge in there. So let's add a little bit more gamboge to this. Also, the more water you use with these paints, the more transparent it will be. So there's a good middle yellow. Make these squares as big or small as you need to. We'll add one more there. This one looks an awful lot like that. I might have to add just a touch more orange in there. So adjust to where you have a um, nice complement of colors. I think I'll add a little bit more orange into this one. Maybe a little bit more red into that one. So as you see, it starts with the gamboge and goes to the cadmium. So I'm going to mark these. This one is gamboge. Make sure I spell it right. G-A-M-B-O-G-E. And this one is cadmium. Let's see if I can do this upside down. C, we'll just call it cad. Now these are your warm colors. These are warm oranges. You can also have a warm um, blue as well, but we'll get into that a little later. That might even be another tutorial. So there's my oranges. I think the next thing I'm going to do is go into the blues. So I'm going to trade a plate up here. <clears throat> These are little glass plates. I love them. They're small enough to fit in a small area like this. So this time I'm going to use that lemony yellow, the Azo, and put a swash of that on my palette. And I'm going to go with the Phthalo, which is cool. Both of these are cool colors. So I'll set my palette aside again. Um, let's add 
the phthalo over here for our pure color. There we go. Now I'm going to begin to mix these on my on my plate. Just a touch of phthalo in there. Now the thing about phthalo is it's a very powerful color. It doesn't take much. There's a nice lemony green there. Let's put that one down. Let's see if I can get a mid-tone green. That looks pretty mid-tone. Now you could divide this color wheel up in as many blocks as you wanted to. I'm working a little smaller than usual today to show it to you on the camera, so I'm only doing three. So the next one is going to be a greeny blue. So there's a nice greeny blue, and I'll add that one down. Let's go a little bluer on that. So again, you could do this with acrylic or watercolor. It's totally up to you. Um, I think I'm going to add another little bit of blue or yellow into this one. There we go. And the wonderful thing about watercolor is how it blends together and does fun things. I see I've got what they call a blossom right there, the yellow going in there. I love that about watercolor. It just it lights my fire. So let's put a little bit more blue into this one too. Okay. There we go. So there's some greens. My next colors I'm going to get into are purples. Now this particular plan I have going here, my purples cross mix. I'm going from a warm red, which is our, let me get the palette back over here, which is our <clears throat> rosy red, quinacridone rose. I'm going to put it right here in its pure state. And I'm going to use the Ultramarine, which actually has a little purple in it. So we'll add that to our paper over here. And this palette has all kinds of stuff stuck to it, so we'll see what we can do with it. Um, again, I'm going with Ultramarine Blue. We'll put it over here. Not to be confused with that one, which is a whole different color. And our rosy red quinacridone rose is the color I use for my rosy red. Now again, if you're using a different media or even a different brand, they might be um, slightly different named, but it'll give you the same results. A little bit different shades of colors, but definitely play with what you have. You don't have to go shopping. <clears throat> so here is, let's go with a rosy purple first. There's a nice rosy purple. Notice how I'm just pulling in a little bit more of that rose. So I'm going to put that rosy purple down. There we go. And add a little bit more blue into it. Oh yeah, right there. That's my favorite purple. Let's see if I can get one more out of this. Mostly blue with just a little bit of red. <clears throat> almost a midnight blue so there's your color wheel right there now how do I get those gorgeous browns oh my gosh let's pull in all these palettes all these plates and see what we can play with oftentimes the gorgeous browns that you're looking for are across the color wheel from each other so for instance let's say burnt sienna let's see how I do make in a burnt sienna Burnt Sienna, I know, is kind of an orangey red, so I'm going to start with my orange. And my question to you is what color is right across the color wheel from orange? Well, it's blue. I'm going to go with, oh my gosh, any mini miny mo. I'm going to go with Ultramarine and mix a little bit of yellow in there. Well, that didn't do Burnt Sienna. Let's keep mixing. Ooh. There we go, we're getting closer. Add a little bit more red into there. That's really close to Burnt Sienna. So this was off of my orange palette. It's not quite Burnt Sienna, but it's dang close, so I'm going to use it. 
There's a burnt sienna-ish color. There we go. What about <clears throat> um, a nice dark brown um, burnt umber? Let's try that. Again, I'm going to start with my um, ultramarine. And what's cross from blue? Well, orange. Get a little bit more orange going over here. So I'm going to take some orange and add it to my blue. Over that little piece of paper. There we go. There is kind of a purpley burnt umber. Well, to the purple shade, but you can play with that and see how you get it. Now, what about a, a yellow ochre? Again, I'm going to start this time with my lemony yellow. And what's across from lemony yellow? Purple. So let's get into a little rosy purple here. I know I don't want a whole lot because I want it to stay to the purple side. And there we have a nice yellow ochre. So know that you can um, color, mix your paints, however, there you go, that one's a little better, to get what you're looking for as you're painting. You can do anything with these six colors. Again, a warm and cool of each one. Let's go over those colors again one more time real quick before I sign off on this one. We have Azo Yellow, Gamboge. Let's move this over. Cadmium Red. And <clears throat> Quinacridone Rose. Ultramarine. That one goes there. And Thalo Blue. So those are the six colors I use for my basic limited palette. Um, I also have on my big palette a lot of other colors, but mostly when I'm doing plain air and I'm out and about, these are my basic colors that I use. Um, again, you can make anything with these colors. Blacks, browns, golds. Now if you wanted to do this um, color wheel, go ahead, hit pause as you need to, but what I encourage you to do is, once you've done it this way, is to go ahead and mix. Try the Quinn Rose with the um, Azo and see what you get. Try the Gamboge with the Ultramarine and see what you get. You might find um, a little more earth tone colors is what I usually find. Um, and so do a couple color wheels. Mix your colors. Play. See what you can come up with. Make notes. You know, I'm going to make notes around the edge of this. Make notes about what's what so that when you go back and start mixing again, you can figure it out. Being ultramarine, being warm, phthalo being cool. Those two sometimes are confusing. Oh, I didn't write azo here. Let's get this and write azo. Azo being cool, gamboge being warm, cadmium being warm and Quinn Rose being cool. So there's your color wheel. And I'm going to let you have fun and play with this. Uh, lots more to do just with color wheels and mixing colors. But this should get you started for this quick tutorial on a rainy Sunday morning. Happy painting. Keep your brushes wet.